Ladies and gentlemen, it's Faye! This is kind of funny because uh, that's a very upbeat song compared to what's on this piece of paper, but, uh, well, it needed to be shared. We'll go with you. Yup. So, um, I went through a really bad breakup last year, and um, after five years of a not so good relationship, so it was a very, very bad place to be. But I figured if I can share some of the things that inspired me whenever I was having a hard time, that maybe it could help somebody out there who's in a relationship that's not so good for them as well. Um, I had other poems to read today, but well, this one has been rolling around in my head for a while and it just would not be silenced. So I decided to share it tonight as this is my first time on the, the big show, so. <laughs> um, but no, so um, pardon me if it's not as polished as sometimes I can be, but I haven't had a chance to really practice it enough because I just finally got it down on paper this morning, so we're gonna see how it goes now, so. It's called The Woods in May. <laughs> Can't read my paper. Um. <clears throat> I was ready to defy fate, ready to depart. Alone in the wood, I sat for hours waiting, but waiting on what I couldn't say. For the time to be right, for the right moment, I sat staring across the landscape unseeing. My eyes blind to the beauty of summer, my ears deaf to the sounds of nature. How did I become so unfeeling? It was gradual, I suppose, to stop sensation, a feeling of worthlessness that killed my spirit. Brought upon me by one unworthy of my love, but twisted upon itself he did, breaking my spirit. I sat in the woods in May, unmoved by anything I experienced. The bag beside me so innocuous held loss and pain. It held my future, or so I thought at the time. Hours from home, I had wandered the woods, my heart empty yet sore to the center and broken. I was damaged, lessened, smaller than a child. I felt the despair of an empty future, devoid of friendship, kindness, and love. I saw my freedoms would be stripped away, my wings broken and crushed into uselessness. I could not bear to live in such a way. Couldn't bear to feel so isolated and alone. Sitting in the woods that day, I prepared for death. I knew if I stayed the course I was on, I would wither. I'd be a flower in winter, all faded petals and shrunken leaves. I knew he'd not let me leave. Many times I had tried. His words had an iron grip on my battered heart and soul. I knew the only escape was somewhere beyond his words. I, unmoved by the flowers, trees, and birds around me, could not fathom this colorless life with its joy drained away. Tears fell into the dirt. I cried for my lost potential. I cried for the love of my family and friends. I was so isolated, and he was going to make it unbearable. Miles from family and friends, a dead-end place with no future for me a place where he could never allow me to leave. A grave seemed better than that unwholesome place. A small noise in the tree to my left, a soft flutter. A face, round and wise, poked from a hollow in the wood. Big luminous gold eyes framed by fierce feathered brows. They stared past me and a fluffy little face peered out, shielded by mother's wing, guarded by her love. And then just another, as downy, appeared beside it. Excitement plain as the beaks and their feathers, yet an edge of fear and worry tinged the expressions. Both mother and owlets felt the same. Hopping along the branch, they hooted softly. Their sounds filled the air with peace. Without warning, the mother nudged the closest owlet. Fluttering madly, it fell, unable to get the wind under wings. And it fell into the leaves, a soft thump on the ground. The other was treated the same, a quick push and a fall. They hopped around, making their way to the tree, and bravely they climbed and reached their branch. One huddled into the mother's side, 
the other was more bold. A quick hop, and the end of the branch, and a bound, and for a few feet the exhilaration of flight. But all things take time, and soon the flight ended. Both were inspired, and the falls were all needed, and an hour passed as I watched them in silence. Their little shrieks and hooks, ho <laughs> hoots brought me back to myself. Their triumph and failures strengthening my resolve. If they can fall and still have the strength to try, so can I. I picked up the bag and I went back to my car. I burned the paper in the jar. I got rid of it all. Death was not for me that day. It is not mine to decide. I will live life till death comes for me. I will not throw away such a precious gift. My life is my own, but not mine to end. And that is the end of my battle with sorrow. And I hope that those who fight with it too will see that there's hope no matter the trouble, that we can all fall and yet fly in the end. Thank you.